Yeah, so today um, the talk is going to be focused on how we use Docker to develop, uh, uh, to deploy our cognitive service and, develop, and deploy them in multiple uh, cloud environment that's across different uh, multiple geos. So uh, this is the agenda I'm going to f follow to, uh, for our discussion today. So first of all, I will give some brief introduction on what um, Watson is and what our uh, Watson Developer Cloud is. And then we'll focus talking about how we transition using VM to use Docker to deploy our cognitive service. And then we'll focus a little bit more on our continuous delivery process. And then we running multiple Docker registries in our cloud environment. So and why we do that and what are the things to be considered in order to do that. So and at the end, I will give a little bit bonus to do a Watson demo. So anyone still remember that Jeopardy so back in 2011? So great, so many of you have seen that. So um, Watson was a big win over the Jeopardy champions in that game. And after that, so what had happened, so are you guys very amazed how smart Watson was in that game? <laughs> OK, awesome. So um, and then since then, there's a lot of customers come to uh, IBM to ask us, you know, they were, they were just like you guys. They're very amazed how smart Watson was. They asked us, can you use the same technology to help us to resolve business problems? So as a result, IBM formed the Watson division that is specifically focused on artificial intelligence development. And today, the old Watson that was running in the IBM supercomputer, and today they're able to run in multiple Docker containers. So besides re-architect the uh, whole Watson technology, we also created a full set of new cognitive service. So those services, some of them are specifically focused on language that you know, recognize human language and also as human speech. And some of the service is specifically focused on image recognition and also doing a data anal uh, insight analysis. So, but I'm not going to go through the detail of all this service here, but if any of you are interested in any of these service and you want to learn more about it, please come to me and we can have a detailed discussion on each of them. So, why we were developing all this new uh, cognitive service? So, IBM made the decision we want to make sure all the cognitive services are published in the cloud, and we want the whole world, you know, build a, an ecosystem, everyone to work with us, to use all the services that we provide, and also contribute to it. So because of that, we need a platform, a PaaS platform, that to host those services in the cloud and able to available 24 times 7. So we started with the goal, setting up the goal on we want to make sure those services are running as microservice and they are cloud native and they are highly available and highly scalable. So of course, you know, uh, security is always the t high concern in when things are running in, in the cloud. So and also security is always uh, one of the top priorities for any uh, service that IBM de delivered to our customer. So we definitely have a, a full set of security uh, compliance to make sure that all the services running there is highly secure. And also we have a seamless DevOps process in terms of how to make the updated service and at the same time make sure that the service is available without any downtime. So as a result, that we uh, we formed this um, Watson Developer Cloud, and today they are able to run in. Uh, we have multiple de uh, Watson Developer Cloud instances. They're running in US, and also we also set it up uh, an instance running in Japan, 
and also we are moving forward having them in, uh, in London as well as in Australia. So the whole Watson Developer Cloud is running in size soft layer. So we use multiple services from soft layer, say uh, the bare metal, the VM service, and also uh, the image management capability, and we we'll use object storage from there, and also networking and so on. And we use, uh, from security perspective, we use um, USM for ID management, and we use AppScan to enable uh, for a vulnerability scanning, and also use a Curator for security logging. So, um, and then we have this full set of um, uh, uh, platform service to, uh, to for uh, DevOps process and also operation visibilities. For example, for DevOps, we use Imaginator to build the image and we pretty much very consistent with how Docker uh, uh, you, being used, we build the image once and ship that everywhere for all the cloud environment that we, we, we support. So, and we, we also provided like um, data service, for example, like uh, Zookeeper, um, Cassandra, and uh, WS3, and so on. So, um, also, we, we also adapted using Docker. So today we use um, Mesos Marathon for uh, Docker management, and we run our own Docker registries. So uh, for the service, in order to enable, they are available 20 24 times seven. So we also have a set of operation excellence service, like you know, uh, to monitor, to make sure that the service is available, and if there's any abnormal, um, uh, behavior that to the service will be notified automatically uh, via um, uh, page duty. So we also use like data power and zoo in terms of doing um, load balancing and we use like Erika to do uh, service discovery. So the history of Watson Developer Cloud with Docker so we, at the beginning, we started looking into use Docker since uh, the mid 2014. But quite honestly, back then, because Docker was just started, and although we really love Docker in terms of how fast it can be deployed and start up. But however, at that time, it's really lack of management capability. Mesos Marathon was just started, and it's really not much of choice in terms of like from management perspective. So we did not use Docker immediately. So we in, instead, for our first set of service that we published in the cloud, we packaged them with, uh, as VMs. But however, VM, it does ha pro, uh, have some drawbacks that prevent us from uh, getting some of the stuff done properly. So we pick up Docker again in about like mid uh, beginning of 2015. And then ever since then, we were able to deliver our cognitive service uh, that are packaging by Docker uh, since uh, mid-2015. So um, the problem that we run into in terms of um, using VM for deployment is that for cognitive service, it's about self-learning. You need to use a lot, of, a lot of data to change the service for the service to become smart and useful. So, and also those data that use to change the service, a lot of them are confidential. It depends on the service and also depends on the organization, like the customer's requirement. So some of the customer actually require full stack that uh, the full stack of Watson Developer Cloud only used by themselves. So that's why we also have some service that is called dedicated offering that is uh, fully dedicated for one, one customer. So because of like, you know, those data is, it could be like you know, some very confidential data that, uh, the, uh, from the customer, and also maybe some business rules uh, that the customers is using. So 
we, we have this process in terms of like, you know, is that the customer need to have their own service instant. So in our, if someone, the, the customer can come to us and just do a one click, what, what underneath is that is that we were able to spin up a service instant for the customer. So when we do we use VM to do that, because of VM is so slow to, to stop and, for, and also for deployment. So to automate this whole process is just very problematic. So, and Docker really helped us from in terms of because it's so fast for deployment and so fast to spin up. So it really helped us to streamline that process in terms of doing dynamic deployment of create a new um, cognitive service instance. And also the, the DevOps process, it provides that you, know, you have Docker registry that able to push the, um, the Docker image and also run it in multiple cloud environment. So this is less seamless. The DevOps process definitely simp simplified our experience in terms of from uh, operation perspective. So, but Docker is still new. So definitely it needs some training, especially to our cognitive developers, because they don't have a much, as much as cloud um, knowledge or as much as like in you know, a continuous delivery uh, knowledge. So it definitely needs some training in terms of you know, help them to understand how to use Docker. But their focus is really on cognitive service development. So next, I will do a little bit more detail in terms of how we simplify that process. Basically, um, our community developers, they only need to know very little bit about Docker and then able to deliver their service, uh, use um, uh, the process that they provide. <coughs> So, as I said, the first set of service that we provide that is running in VMs. So we are in the transition mode of transitioning all the service from VM to Docker, and some of the newer service that was just developed that they are running in um, Docker today. So, but we definitely have a, a large set of service already transitioned transition to run in Docker. So this picture basically shows that we have both the VM and the Docker at the same environment. And so uh, f starting from the bottom, so we use Jenkins to fully automate the whole process. So Jenkins basically send a request to Imaginator, which is a image built uh, baking tool that it can bake uh, VM image as well as baking a uh, Docker image. So once we have the image, it will push for VM, it will push the soft layer uh, image repository. And for Docker image, it will push into our private Docker registry. And once that we have the image, so for VM, we use Oscar which is a tool that we, use, we got from uh, the Netflix OSS stack that able to deploy the VM image in, into the environment. And then for Docker, we use Mesos Marathon today. So once the service is up, then the service will automatically, because we already have the client that is running inside the Docker container, so uh, the service will automatically register into Eureka. So Eureka essentially is the central point of, for um, uh, uh, service registry, for service registration. So and the service is up, and then it, it also register, and then, we, then the customer can have requests from the top, route it in, get into uh, data power. And data power essentially is a front end gatekeeper, like it ensures security as well as um, load balancing. So, and, and data power, you we talk to LDAP for authentication, and then we use Zoo uh, to do load balancing across multiple service instances. That's kind of high level of how it works, and we also have a set of like you know, operation visibility components like ELK, and also we use um, uh, uptime, those type of uh, capability to monitoring the service. 
So, and this whole picture, the, all the components, they all running in private network, and only data power is the piece that have public network, a public access to. So, if you think that it's hard to set up a cloud environment the first time, it's a lot harder to make sure when you update the environment and it's, it's zero downtime. And to achieve, like, you know, making the service is available 24 times seven. So the way that we try to enable that is that we do not do any in-place update. So basically any change we have we use um, rep rack deployment. It's also, you know, uh, there's people call that as blue, a green blue deployment. So basically how it works is that you already have the first, first uh, auto scaling group running. And then when you have a newer version, then uh, we will spin up another auto scaling group. So at that time, we have both version, the older version and the newer version, newer version running at the same time. And then we do a lot of testing to make sure that the, older, the newer version is working properly. And once we feel it's, we are confident that it's working properly, and then we will um, disable the older version. But at times, it's not the, story, not the situation. So in, in, the, in the case when the newer version is not running as good, and then we're always able to just disable the newer version and roll back to the older version. So the, the, the bottom line is, is that we do enough testing, we are very confident that we start to disable the older version and then let it run, let the newer version run a few days, and if it's, everything is good, then we delete the older version. <coughs> So I'm going to give a little bit more detail in terms of how we do continuous delivery and image baking so that to provide an easy experience for um, any service running in this platform. So first of all, that you know, we, everything we deploy is the whole image. So we do not do any, like even with just one line of code change we do not just go ahead, just make that one line of code change. So we will rebuild the whole image. And that's what, how it comes into is that the image, the imaginator server that have this image building capability that you can, we can use it to build either Docker image or VM image. So, um, for us, we, we also provided a set of common components, like say, for example, security, or any like, you know, lock, um, locking uh, clients. So we put, uh, any type of agent that can be shared across all the service, we make them as part of the base image. So we, we provide different flavor of the base image so that any service comes in, they can just extend on top and build their image on top. So a lot of time that the service is running, like they build their image like in Debian files. So the way that they use Docker is just use Docker file, you know, just install one Debian file. So it's very simple, so they don't have to learn a lot about Docker in order to be able to use this environment. So um, the process in century is, um, that it's, our source code is uh, storing at GitHub, and then we, our Jenkins servers have workflow to extract the, Git, uh, the source code from Git, and then pass that, build the um, Debian file and pass it into Imaginator, and then build the image. And for um, VM image, we use the soft layer uh, image repository to store all the VM image, and for um, Docker, we use our private Docker registry to store them. So once we have the, Im the um, Docker image or the VM image, then we have a another tooling, which is use Asuka. This Asuka tooling is, is essentially a Netflix OSS component that we use to do uh, initial deployment to create an auto scaling group to deploy the VM. 
So uh, for Docker right now, we still using semi-automated and semi-manual um, uh, process in terms of how to deploy the Docker container, you know, um, uh, and are able to do the web break deploy uh, update. So we actually looking into using active deploy because it's pretty much uh, provide a very similar experience like ASCA able to do for VMs. So it's also doing the red black deployment. So as I said, that we're running multiple Docker, private Docker registries in our environment, and we have multiple cloud offerings. It is on the customer's need. We have a dedicated cloud offerings, specifically have just one full stack of um, Watson service just for one specific customer. And we also have public cloud offering. So specifically this picture is on our public cloud offering. So we have multiple environments. So we have the dev environment and we have staging and production. So for each environment, we run two um, Docker registries, and we use XA proxy to do load balancing across the two uh, Docker registries for each environment. And then um, we use software object storage, uh, stores all the Docker image. So uh, just for development convenience, we also have Docker registries running inside uh, IBM internet. So it's easy. And, they point it into the same object storage so we can push an image from IBM internet and able to use the Docker image inside soft layer. So some of the experience that we have, we have seen in terms of why we're running so many Docker registries and in our environment. So essentially is proprietary source code that we have. We cannot put that in the Docker public registry. And also, the security requirement our customer has that you know, uh, they need a fully isolated stack. So based on our experience, pretty much, we, I think that in the production environment, basically, it's not that possible to use the, the public Docker registry. And also, because of the network accessibility, like I just said, that whole full stack, they're all running in private network. Only the data power, that top layer that have public address and can access to the public network. So, and also we have multiple offerings. So we like multiple geos that, you know, some we have the full, full stack of um, Boston Developer Cloud running in US and they're setting up in London and Australia. And we also have a, a full stack running in Asian Pacific. Pacific. So think about like, you know, trying to pull a Docker image, you know, when you are in Asia, how to pull the Docker image from the Docker registry, lost registry in US is really not possible with the how slow the network that is. So, but running multiple versions of Docker registry, also, you know, keep in mind that definitely you need to have high count, you know, have resource to, to maintain it and make sure that it's up to date with, you know, Docker is still being developed and you know, have newer versions coming up, how to keep them all up to date and operational. So next, let's go through the version demo. And then also want to make sure that you guys know that we also have, I have the reference link here that is linked to different uh, version service that you can take a look later. So this is, if, that you can come here, this is the um, Watson Developer Cloud Starter Kit that we have multiple Watson service running here and some examples of um, cognitive service that you can see. So I'm going to try this um, conversational agent. So the conversational agent is developed use to Watson service the dialogue service, as well, as well as the natural language classifier. So come here, we, I can just launch the app. And then, so let's chat with Watson. 
on, on the upcoming new movies, see which one that we want to watch. So how can I call you? I'm going to just put my name here. So I will say the new one, the upcoming show service. So if you show up like, you know, or like what kind of category of movies I would like, then I would say let's do comedy. And then I will ask, you know, the preference. So let's say PG. So there's only one available, and if I choose it, it will let me know, you know, are you sure about that? So that is kind of a little bit a demo on like, you know, how Watson can, um, you know, help you to choose the right movie you want to watch. There's a lot of other Watson service that you can play with. Okay, thank you. <laughs>